okay so we are discussing about uh, dico form okay and uh, in dico form we gone through couple of tutorials let's explore where we are so we uh, gone through this flower circular cylinder okay and i ask you to do certain test cases with the help of that now the last part of uh, this ico form tutorial is the flow inside a elbow okay still now what we uh, look at for this it is uh, flow over a some blub body now let's look at inflow and outflow with uh, some elbow type of the geometry and here what we're going to do we're not going to uh, construct the mesh with the help of the block mesh but the mesh is already created and we try to import that mesh so let's explore how we can uh, use some import uh, utilities so i co form elbow okay and here is the our readme file so just look at so here we try to use the dot msh file so dot msh file that means the mesh is constructed for the fluent so we try to utilize the fluent mesh to form utility and till it is in two dimensional nature so the if we want to read a mesh that is constructed for fluent or inside the fluent then you have two utility if it is 2d mesh then we go with the fluent mesh to form if it is 3d then we have to use fluent 3d mesh to form okay so let's explore how we can use this utility so let's open the terminal go to that location source the file okay so we try to follow step by step everything okay so let's clean the tutorial now we are not going to create the mesh with the block mesh so we going to use this option so let's look at fluent if you type type fluent and tab you have two option fluent mesh to form and fluent 3d mesh to form okay so if your mesh is two dimensional okay then work with fluent mesh to form if your mesh is three dimensional then work with the fluent 3d mesh to form okay so here we are working 2d mesh so me this and then it required the name of the file okay now check mesh if you look at the check mesh it give you the idea what the patch name so velocity in velocity in patch number 5 patch number 6 then pressure outlet okay then wall and wall 8 and wall 4 okay later on we explore how it look like we have a total uh, all are the prism type of the element we are don't have a right now regular hexa type of the element why it's called prism element because mesh when it constructed is 2d and triangular element but when the open form read that it extrude in the z direction so when you extrude any of the triangular element uh, in the z direction it becomes the prism element that's why here you see the prism type of the mesh okay and here is the its entire domain size okay so this is what you see let let's see the para form how it look like and so para this is the geometry okay it is going to be very coarse mesh okay because we want to just look at how its uh, mesh is look like and then let's look at all the patch file as well okay so patch and patch name you activate okay so look it give you the idea because when you are importing the mesh from some other uh, measure we don't know what uh, name of different different segment okay so this is the inlet okay this is the inlet 6 so, sorry inlet 5 and this is inlet 6 below one okay make sure we are understanding correctly or not yeah this is inlet 5 this is inlet 4 okay along with that we have a outlet as well so outlet is here okay along with that we have a wall so wall 8 is this one and wall 4 is other than everything that one okay so that is all wall so ultimately if you want to click at a time wall then you use this wall group when uh, do you remember when i am discussing about the boundary file at that time i show you the groups and if you keep all the uh, planes in one particular group, it is very easy to switch on and switch off so these all fall under the group so it is very easy you need not to open step by step okay and then front and back part okay so that is front and back patch that is this one so like that way it is the mesh file what we see okay now let's explore few more entries in this particular tutorial let's look at the transport property okay so point zero 0.01 is the transport property and now look at the poly mesh okay in the poly mesh check the boundary file so look 
we all the entries we will see here so total we have a six uh, patch two inlets bigger inlet smaller inlet one is outlet and few walls so in the wall we specify the n group wall so that is what i told you in the group way you can access the all the wall for, uh, at a time then you have front and back is we are specifying as a empty okay so this is what you can see in the uh, boundary file uh, similar line let's check what boundary condition we specified here okay so at the inlet that is bigger inlet let me open the file okay so this is the inlet and in inlet we have to specify velocity in x direction for inlet 2 we have to specify velocity in the y direction so you can see from here for inlet uh, bigger inlet we specify velocity in x direction and smaller inlet we are specifying velocity in the y direction okay pressure outlet so that's why we have a velocity gradient condition and all are the walls other except front and back is empty along with that let's check the pressure condition so in pressure we specify outlet as a atmospheric pressure so wherever you specify the velocity we have a fixed zero gradient conditions okay that is neumann condition for velocity and front and back is the empty so that many entry we have let's see what we have at a um, control dict file so ico form okay then we're going to run for something like 100 uh, second time step is given okay and no more other entry is available here schemes okay eulerian uh, implicit scheme we are going to use then solution by uh, preconditional cg is the solver okay and smooth solver for velocity and non orthogonal because we are working with unstructured mesh so when you start working unstructured mesh you must specify minimum one or two okay otherwise your simulation not going to be progress so because when you go away from uh, cartesian type of the mesh you start specifying this and uh, non orthogonal corrections okay so this is all uh, we have let's try to run this case so it gives us the idea what going to happen so let me start with our usual way okay and then let's see the convergence okay. right so look because our mesh is very coarse so it is very difficult to convert the pressure okay so pressure is not going to convert much much uh, much more than this okay if you want to get a better convergence then we have to refine the mesh from where the mesh is generated anyway let's check how the output is look like in paraform so paraform and u is the velocity okay so inlet we specified certain velocity okay so here we specify three and here we specify one okay so if you see the component wise you can see this is one and if you see the y component you will see this is the three okay that we specified here now let's look at the its magnitude wise how it's go so from here one fluid is entering at one meter per second from here the another fluid is entering at three meter per second and both are mixing in this zone so that is what is visible here okay so this is very very uh, simple type of the test case you can uh, create your own test case with the help of this ICO form mm. so but please remember with the help of the ICO form you can uh, simulate unsteady as well as steady flow when I say uh, as well as steady that means uh, even though your simulation uh, application is unsteady that is ICO form but you can till uh, simulate your steady state physics with the help of the ICO form there is no problem uh, but if you want only steady state type of the uh, solver uh, to be used then stick to the simple form okay so that is what uh, one can do with the help of this thing so uh, let's summarize the entire thing what we cover in this particular tutorials too so we uh, explore the certain option in the ICO form okay and uh, we start understanding with the cavity and the skew cavity then we move towards the flow or circular cylinder and at the end we uh, import the mesh that is generated for the fluent and we use the fluent mesh to form utility and try to mm, look at the data okay. along with this uh, if you see in this elbow you will see another uh, file it is called form data to fluent okay like 
we read the file that is generated in the fluent we can export the file that is read by the fluent for that you require the form data to fluent dict type of the one utility okay if you see here you have a couple of entries for that okay so it is particular meaning of this number huh? so when we explore the particular utility i will make you sure that you understand uh, what is from where this number is coming in everything but this is the very good uh, utility that will allow you to convert form data to the fluent format okay so that is what we cover